Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another Sunday service. A uh, special announcement I want to make for the people of Pugwash. It's been determined that we will open our services on the 13th of September. That will be our first service, 13th of September at 11 o'clock, of course. Um, let everybody know. Following that, there will be a barbecue. Hot dogs, hamburg, ice cream. No, the ice cream won't be on the barbecue, but there will be other items as well. And all are welcome to stay. Our service of worship for this 11th Sunday after Pentecost, August 16th. You could be in one of a hundred places right now, in bed with the covers over your head, gardening or hiking or drinking coffee on the deck, but you are here in community with God and with one another. What is it that calls you here week after week for the first time? Is it a lifelong habit, a quest for holiness, an expectation or an easy choice? Are we seeking? Are we asking? God has found you here. Thank God for the blessing of the divine presence. For as promised, where we gather, Jesus himself is among us. Let us pray. Word of God made flesh, bless us with wisdom and send us to do our tasks. Clothe us with holiness in your Son. Creating God, teach us to listen to the language of your heart. Make us your scribes. O Holy Word incarnate, Word made flesh, dwell among us. Be in the vein, in the marrow, and in the bone. O Holy Word incarnate, in you we live and move and have our being. In you is life. Amen. Our prayer of renewal. Throughout our lives we have received the promises you give that you are with us. We have the promise that you will hold us up. We have the promise that you will pull us through the rough times. We have the promise that you love us and invite us to be partners with you in this world that includes both challenges and treasures. Yet in those moments when our world tilts, when things don't go according to our plan, we find ourselves battered and sore. We don't always pay attention to you, O oh God. Forgive us. Open our hearts and souls to find you. May we remember that deep in our hearts your presence is with us. May we remember that we are a part of your amazing creation. We are grateful to know that our courage and strength come from you at all times and constantly. Amen. No matter where we are, God is there. No matter what we've done, God forgives. No matter our reluctance to accept God, God has accepted us. With that assurance, receive forgiveness and live in hope. Amen. Reading from Mark, chapter 7. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard of him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. The Gospel of Christ. Yes. 
eternal God, open our minds to hear your word, our hearts to love your word, and our lives to be obedient to your word, through the power of your Holy Spirit, and the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe that we cannot truly come to understand the stories of Scripture, or in fact the entire Bible, unless we know the circumstances that caused the stories to be written. I've always outlined the history behind the accounts as best as my sources reveal history to me. I regret if there are some among you who do not enjoy history and would prefer not to hear this kind of stuff. But I believe it is always important to get a bit of information. And today's text is probably in more need to have the history pointed out than anything we've heard in recent Sundays. Jesus has been telling those who will listen, those who would hear that he ha is the bread of life. He has emphasized his role as the one sent from God. He has emphasized how it is through him that we can come to better understand our God. He told his audiences that if we were to watch him, if we were to listen to him, we would see all that we need to know to understand our God. So today we continue following Jesus' activities throughout the region of Galilee, as told in the Gospels. One of the messages we should have taken from my reflections is that this series of events introduce the beginning of the end of Jesus' effective ministry among his own people, among some of his own decided followers. Today's account of Jesus' ministry, the healing of the Syrophoenician woman's daughter, can be seen as apt now that we know of his waning popularity. Now Jesus is moving on into the non-Jewish community. He's venturing out into the lives of the Gentiles. His ministry is taking on a new direction. Earlier stories have recalled and revealed that Jesus was somewhat reluctant to become involved with the non-Jewish population. In fact, one of the points behind Jesus' conversation with the Syrophoenician woman makes direct reference to that fact. Behind today's reading is Jesus' discussion with the Pharisees about clean and unclean. Why his disciples do not obey these laws is part of the accusations. Well, now Jesus is found in the territory of the Gentiles, territory classed as unclean and unacceptable to faithful, devout Jews. Tyre and Sidon and the, and the Decapolis are cities located in the region known as Phoenicia, which at the time was ruled by Syria. From our high school history, we may remember that it was the Phoenicians who were the master sailors of the known world. They were the first seamen to navigate by reading the stars. They were believed to have sailed as far north as the British Isles and perhaps even circumnavigated the continent of Africa. We may even recall that they were also famous because of a purple dye that they had created a dye that was the envy of the wealthy. Tyre and Sidon and the Decapolis were major centers of commerce. Tyre had the famous harbor, which was defended by an equally famous fortress. These cities were once under the influence of Israel, but Israel had failed in its effort to effectively rule in that region. These cities were independent, each having their own king, their own gods, and their own coinage. Jesus is without any doubt in new territory. He is practically outside the area where Israel had any effective control. He was on his own, if you will. But Jesus was no stranger to the people who lived there. His reputation covered most of the regions surrounding Galilee, 
and probably it was read Jesus' reputation that first brought the Syrophoenician woman to him. The woman came, asking Jesus' help for her daughter. Jesus' response seems most out of character. We understand Jesus as the compassionate one. Jesus is the one who brings comfort to the troubled, health to the sick, joy to the life of his believers. In Mark chapter 7, verse 27, we can read, First, let the children eat all they want, for it is not right to take children's bread and toss it to the dogs. First, let the people of Israel hear my teaching, for it is not right to take this teaching and toss it to outsiders. It is not right to toss it to the dogs. The first time I encountered this passage, I was surprised with this response. However, it is worth knowing that the term dogs was not inappropriate in the time of Jesus. The dog was not well loved, and it was not necessarily a companion at that time. It was a term expressing dishonor, and I'm aware as a child growing up, we used to hear it used in English as well. In the Greek, the word meant a shameless and audacious woman. To a Jew, it was the term for contempt. The word dog was a word used to describe the Gentiles. So both participants in this conversation know exactly what the other is saying. It is her reply to Jesus that contains the message in the discourse. Yes, Lord, she said, but even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Yes, Lord, but the Gentiles have heard of your teachings and have come to believe. Her retort changed Jesus' thinking, and she was rewarded for her faith. Her daughter was healed. Symbolically, the, so, the Syrophoenician woman represents the people in the Gentile world who so eagerly seized on the teachings of Jesus that the Jews had rejected and thrown away. So what is Mark trying to present in his account? How can the event that happened more than 2,000 years ago be of any influence on us. As we conclude in Bible study, Scripture has two audiences. First, there is the audience, the people who are actually in the story. For us, then, there is the Syrophoenician woman and Jesus. There is also those others who are standing around witnessing what Jesus is doing. We have already pointed out that when talking about the, the conversation of how Jesus' reputation was known among the people in the region. The second audience is us. We are witnessing, thanks to the Gospel writers, what Jesus is doing. We are acquiring this knowledge which enters us and becomes part of our understanding of our God. Mark points out that what Jesus is doing among his people on earth comes to him from God. Jesus carries out the task, but God directs its happenings. Jesus treated the woman as an individual. This one person had special needs and special problems. If we bring our needs and problems to Jesus, we can see that he will treat us as individuals too. He will deal with us in ways that will spare our feelings and in a way that we can understand. Jesus worked in a world of sin. He worked in a world that had become spoiled by the actions of human beings. Jesus worked in a world that had become spoiled by the disobedience of humans to God's creation. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? 
The declaration of the people that Jesus had done everything well conjures up none other than the verdict of God upon his creation in the very beginning and recorded in the first chapter of the book of Genesis. Jesus, through the healing of broken bodies and the promise of salvation to human souls, had begun the work of creation all over again. In the beginning, everything had been good. Human sin had spoiled it. And now Jesus was bringing back the beauty of God to the world. Jesus was showing that because of the involvement of God in our lives, we too can be made good. Jesus was presenting what the kingdom of God can be, a place where there is no gnashing of teeth, no tears, no crying, a place where everything is good, a place open to anyone who wishes to enter regardless of their background. Amen. Grant us, God, the grace of giving with the spirit large and free, that ourselves and all our living may be, we offer faithfully. For our offering prayer, we dedicate these gifts and our lives to you, O God, in thanksgiving for your great gift of Jesus, in whom we know an inner peace that is beyond understanding. Strengthen and empower our offerings through your Holy Spirit within us to be bearers of this peace wherever we go. Amen. Let us pray. As we come together today, we ask for your grace to flow in our midst, that we should feel it like a river that flows, like a breeze that refreshes, like a sun that warms us. Remind us of the power of your forgiving love so that we may find ways to escape the poor choices we make. Help us to find clarity as we move about our world, led by the powerful teacher and healer and comforter, Jesus. You know where our healing is needed. You know where relief is possible. You know where we carry guilt for having hurt others. Ever grateful are we for your presence and Holy Spirit that lives in our hearts. Guide us through your creation so that we can fix what is wrong, so that we can be the doers of your will. Amen. We celebrate with those are, who are having a birthday. And in this week, it's Helen Mattinson. We also celebrate with those who are having anniversaries or special achievements are being observed or remembered. Holy Spirit be present as we enjoy a long life, as we renew vows made, as we grow and experience your grace. We pray for all who are unwell at home, in hospital or nursing homes, remembering again this week Mary Patterson. We ask that you comfort her in this time of her discomfort. Amen. We pray for those who are now at rest with God, remembering Matthew Stanley Ellis of Oxford, Patricia Sally Jennings of Mastown, Cora Joyce Langell of Tatamagush, Keith Douglas Weatherby of Tatamagush, Jean Elizabeth Swallow of Bass River, and Lila Ellen Jean Williamson of Pugwash. Rest eternal and light perpetual shine upon all, gracious God. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
let us go forth. For the love of God is ours to share. The peace of Christ is ours to extend. The power of the Holy Spirit is ours to offer. Amen. Go now in peace. Never be afraid. God will go with you each hour of every day. God now, go now in faith steadfast, strong and true. Know he will guide in all that you do. Go now in love and show you believe. Reach out to others so all the world can see. God will be there watching from within. Go now in peace, in faith and in love. Amen. Hugs, and we'll talk again soon. Oh,